an issue very dear to my heart, and that is the self-determination of the Armenian people. <laughs> Armenians, Mr Speaker, deserve the right to self-determination. Sir, they have earned it. They have earned it through the blood and sacrifice of 1.5 million innocents who were systematically murdered for one sole reason, that they were Armenian. I understand this desire, Mr Speaker. Greece this year will celebrate its 200th year of independence. Independence from the same oppressors, the same murderers, the same tyrants that occupied the lands of my mother and father. The Ottoman Empire. Our two nations, along with the Assyrians, spilled blood because of our shared faith, our unique ethnicities, and because we stood in the way of tyranny, authoritarianism, expansionism, and empire. There's also one other fundamental ingredient in that mix. We are Christians. Living in the lands of our ancestors, sought after by conquerors. This parliament has a proud history, and I'm glad that you acknowledge the presence of former Speaker Atkinson in the Strangers Gallery. Because this parliament has a proud history of acknowledging the wrongs and injustices of the past. In 2009, as a backbencher, I was proud to be part of a debate initiated by the former member for Spence to recognise the genocide of three ethnicities. Greek, Armenian and Assyrians at the hands of the Turkish military. I hope today that again we can show the same courage and foresight as previous parliaments and acknowledge the current attempts by Turkey and their ally Azerbaijan to once again commit genocide, ethnic cleansing in the traditional ancestral homes of the Armenian people. Mr Speaker, I declare today, now in this place, my belief that Aztec is Armenian. It is their home. Their connection to this land is not in dispute historically, factually or presently. What has occurred is a playbook that we have all seen before. We saw it at the beginning of the last century uh, in Asia Minor. We saw it again in Cyprus in 1974. The use of the military to kill, murder, rape, intimidate. To what end? To ethnically cleanse a people from their homes and their lands so that they flee. Why? Empire, expansionism, influence, territory. We believe in the rule of law. The rule of law governs all we do. That's why we're here in the parliament. Now, we have a question to answer. And that question is, do the Armenian people deserve justice? Do they deserve to reside in the lands of their fathers and mothers since the sixth century BC? The answer to that, unequivocally, is yes. It is historical truth. It's not something that they can separate from their being. It's who they are. I am, my mother is from the longest inhabited city in Europe, Arwals. I am of Arwals as any other Helene who's lived there. There's nothing I can do to, to, to remove myself from it, as are the Armenian people as are the Ghana people who we acknowledge every day from this land. So for us to deny their right to self-determination and ignore what has occurred is a travesty and an injustice. And we need, as a people, as a state and as a parliament, to speak up because our citizens are hurting. Our citizens are feeling pain and anguish. The consequences of this invasion are simple and devastating. There's death. Death 
family separations, murder, displacement, atrocities. But like I said, we've seen this before. Attack civilian populations with terror, cluster bombs, with weapons that are banned by civilised nations. Why? To get them to flee. Now, last year what occurred was an act of aggression. It was an attack started by Azerbaijan against Armenia and the Republic of Aztec, and I hope I've pronounced that correctly, on the 27th of September. It was premeditated, it was pre-planned, it was orchestrated, and it was executed. And that did so, Azerbaijan did not do so on their own. They did so with the assistance and planning of a modern military power, the Republic of Turkey. Now, Azerbaijan and Turkey are close allies. Their languages are similar, their faiths are similar, their aspirations are similar. I have no quarrel with the people of Azerbaijan. I am sure that many of them are just as horrified at the atrocities committed in their name as we are today. But the governments of those two countries do not fulfil what we would consider to be liberal democracies. Dissent in those countries is quashed. Journalists are arrested and imprisoned. We've seen the desecration of churches and monasteries in Armenia. We've seen it in Turkey. We've seen it in Cyprus. It is the same playbook over and over and over again. I say, enough. It's time we speak out. It's time we say, that is not right. The atrocities that have been committed in Aztec by the military of Azerbaijan include the use of Syrian mercenaries. Now, the interesting point here that I wish to make, the reason I mention Syrian mercenaries, is that there are great powers outside of this local conflict that are intervening in this conflict for their own geopolitical reasons. And the reason you would use mercenaries is, again, the same way in Operation Attila, which was designed to um, commit atrocities in northern Cyprus, people, soldiers, were given um, uh, orders to be brutal, to rape, to pillage. The same orders were given to these mercenaries to be brutal, to target civilians, not military targets. Weaponising of drones, cluster munitions, towns and villages razed to the ground. Now, I've read the reports of what occurred in Asia Minor. Uh, I'm very proud to say to this house that my grandfather, my father's father, was part of the Hellenic army that sought to liberate um, many people of Asia Minor and was stationed in the city of Smyrna in, 19, in the, early, uh, the early part of the 20th century. And he saw firsthand the atrocities that were committed. And of course, what we saw then is what we're seeing today, the, the, vandal the vandalising of globally significant heritage sites, um, monasteries, um, cultural institutions, uh, cathedrals recognised by UNESCO as being of cultural significance throughout the world, destroyed. Now, when this parliament recognised the genocide of Armenians, Greeks and Assyrians, it took from 1915 to 2009 for this state to recognise what the whole world knew. American journalists on the ground saw the atrocities firsthand. Australian soldiers, South Australian soldiers, stationed in Asia Minor after World War I, saw these atrocities, reported them back. British officers saw these atrocities. French naval ships picked up fleeing Armenians and Assyrians. We know what had occurred. And it took nearly 100 years for us to recognise that injustice. 
Let's not wait another 100 years to recognise this injustice. Let's do it quickly. Let's move quickly. And I want to congratulate my friend, who I was proud to serve with uh, as a treasurer, um, Gladys Berejiklian. He's gone on, um, he's been demoted to the position of Premier from Treasurer. Uh, she has gone on. I'm not a backbench, I'm a shadow minister. Yes. Uh, but thank you very much for interjecting that bit of political yeah. in this important debate. But anyway, never mind, never mind. Why well, say something nice? But Gladys Berejiklian has shown the courage of her convictions and her government to support a motion by a Liberal MP, which we have copied word for word. We've done so for a particular reason. I don't want this to be political. I want us to speak with one voice. I want this parliament to speak out together, not as Labor MPs, not as independents, not as Liberal MPs, but as South Australians, with one voice to say, our citizens in their homelands are feeling terrorised, victimised, and are subject to cruel war crimes. We should call them out. And that's why we should support this motion unanimously. At the end of World War II, as concentration camp after concentration camp was liberated, the Jewish people finally found a home and they defend that home by any means necessary. And we have passed motions in this parliament about the self-determination of Israel. Now, I also have sympathies for the Palestinian minorities, a great deal of sympathies for them. However, however, people who have been subject to genocide have a right to self-determination. And we should recognise that right the same way we recognise it for Israel. I believe, I believe this parliament should stand up and do the right thing. And I'm encouraged by my colleague Irene Yumanikos and the Shadow Minister for um, Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs, the member for BATCO, support for this motion. Um, it is, in my opinion, non-controversial for a liberal democracy to, to call out atrocities. There is nothing in this motion that is controversial. It speaks the truth. We all know it. The UN knows it. Our allies know it. Australia knows it. We need to speak out. There is currently a ceasefire. That ceasefire was, of course, implemented through negotiation through the Russian Federation. The United States was not involved in that ceasefire. The US administration sat that one out. There is a new administration in the United States. And I understand that President Biden has a very different view about what should have occurred in this, um, in this conflict. I hope that the Republic of Armenia, that they will see what we are saying here today, that we have not forgotten them that we hear them, we hear um, their screams of injustice, we hear their cries for justice, that we hear what they have to say and that we support them. I was previously given this Armenian flag as a gift today. I will fly this at my office. I will fly it proudly in support of a minority who want to live in peace who want to live in the lands of their fathers and mothers, who want to live harmoniously with their neighbours, do not seek empire, do not seek to expand, aren't seeking military glory, who just want to live and express their ethnicity, their faith and their culture and pass it on to their children. They want what we all want, a future for our children, freedom, liberty, democracy and justice. How can we deny them that? And are any of us truly free if they're not? What does it mean for us to have these freedoms and enjoy them if these people are living in fear and terror? Mr Speaker, I urge my colleagues in this parliament to put partisanship aside and support the Republic and people of Armenia. Hear, hear. Oh. For Newland. I move that debate be adjourned. It's been moved.
Is it seconded? Yes, I'll put it at once. Those of your opinion say aye. Against say no. I think the ayes have it. A division called for. Ring the bells. Order. The question is that debate on the motion be adjourned. Those for the question pass the right of the chair. Those against to my left. I point the member for Newland as teller for the ayes. The member for West Torrens as teller for the noes. Order the results of the division. There being 23 ayes and 23 noes, uh, the uh, Speaker uh, has the casting vote in accordance with Standing Order 180. I cast my vote with the noes. Member for Badco. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise as Shadow Minister for Multicultural Affairs to support this important motion moved by my colleague and good friend, the Member for West Torrens. I thank him for his long standing concern for the people of Armenia and standing up for human rights wherever they may be violated. The freedom for all people to live in peace and safety is something to which every democratic jurisdiction should aspire, not just for its own people, but for all people. All those who value human life should promote and protect the freedom of fellow humans across every nation. We are so fortunate here in Australia to live in relative safety and security in our daily lives, not fearing armed conflict or genocide. But we should utilise that good fortune to advocate for the rights of others. And for that reason, I commend the motion and my colleagues for bringing it in this House and in the other place, led by Ms Irene Nevmatikos. Artsakh is a de facto independent state populated overwhelmingly by ethnic Armenians. It enjoys a close relationship with Armenia, sharing culture, currency and a long intertwined social and political history extending back many centuries, even millennia. Sadly, it sits in a region that for more than 100 years has been frequently marred by war, genocide and unspeakable human suffering. And indeed, as I researched for this speech, I was quite shocked at some of the material uh, revealing um, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things that have happened in that region of the world. On the 27th of September last year, aggressive military action began against the Republic of Artsakh and the Republic of Armenia. Estimates suggest that the conflict has so far led to the deaths of an estimated 3,000 ethnic Armenians and the displacement of over 150,000 ethnic Armenians from Artsakh. They're not numbers. They're real people, men, women and children. 
Among other things, this motion calls for the peaceful resettlement of Armenian refugees without further reprisals, something all members in this place must surely agree is a desirable outcome. The motion advocates for an enduring peaceful settlement of the conflict on the basis of self-determination. A provisional peace agreement was established on 10 November, but the situation remains precarious and lives remain at risk. It's desirable to see peaceful intentions made manifest in practical outcomes to secure stable and lasting peace for Artsakh and its people. The South Australian Parliament would not be alone in our support of Artsakh and in our condemnation of the current aggression against Artsakh and its people. On the 22nd of October last year, the New South Wales House of Assembly passed a similar motion to this one with near unanimous support, 61 in favour and just two opposed. In 2012, the New South Wales Legislative Council recognised the Armenian Republic's right to self-determination. That was just three years after this state parliament formally recognised the early 20th century genocide of 1.5 million Armenians, Pontian Greeks and Assyrians by the imperial government of the Ottoman Empire. The architect and driving force of that motion was the then member for Croydon and the then multicultural affairs minister Michael Atkinson, a true scholar of world politics and history and a strong advocate for the human rights of people in lands so far away from ours. Thanks must go to him for that motion in 2009, which led the way for many other Australian jurisdictions and jurisdictions overseas to follow. South Australia was the first jurisdiction to move such a motion and second only in the world to Sweden. And I note that his leadership actually led to the then member for Croydon receiving an invitation to Greece to speak in the square to over 20,000 people. And I'm so pleased that he can join us today. The motion at that time both condemned the atrocities but also acknowledged the significant humanitarian effort by South Australians who aided the victims and survivors of the genocide over a century ago. The ongoing unrest and instability across the region populated by ethnic Armenians has led to a widespread diaspora of which Australia has been the beneficiary. We're lucky to have a proud population of Armenian people in our state and across the nation. Some of us may not realise the high achievement of many Armenian Australians. A musician, very uh, familiar to us here in Adelaide, and a friend of mine, Slava Gregorian, hails from Armenia. He is the brains behind the Adelaide Guitar Festival, as well as one of, and, as, and he is also one of its performing highlights, not to mention an ARIA award winner. And I can't wait to hear his beautiful guitar again soon. Armenia is well represented in elite boxing and weightlifting. Champion weightlifter Yurik Sarkisian has taken out many world titles as well as Commonwealth and Olympic honours. In politics, as my colleague mentioned, the Premier of New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian, leads the way. While in my own field of journalism, former Network 10 newsreader George Denikian, despite not being on air for more than a decade, remains an icon of the television news industry. His father was a Greek Armenian immigrating to Australia in 1949. Regardless of the circumstances in which they and their families and countless others in the 50,000 strong Armenian Australian community have come to live here, they are Australians now. Australians who retain the strength of their proud cultural identity as Armenians, and we are richer as a nation for that. It's disingenuous to embrace our Armenian Australian countrymen and women here in this nation and this state without also extending our care to the Armenians who remain within their indigenous region. The ethnic Armenians in Artsakh are equally deserving of our recognition under the same principles of humanity that all of us in this place hold dear. As I mentioned in November, a provisional peace agreement was established between Armenia, Azerbaijan and Russia. The motion before us today recognises that agreement is the first step of the ongoing diplomatic and humanitarian work that's necessary to ensure that hostilities cease, that refugees are able to return to their homes or to be suitably and peacefully resettled, and that sites of historical, religious and cultural significance are preserved. I thank our friends at the Armenian Cultural Association of South Australia its leadership and its members for their strong advocacy on this absolutely heart-wrenching matter. I also extend my prayers to your families and friends in your birth country who have endured such horrors. 
It was a pleasure to meet with you all earlier, and I especially thank Emil Davitian and Elena Gasparian and all other members and friends of the association uh, for lobbying so hard for this motion to come before our parliament today. As the Shadow Minister for Multicultural Affairs, I'm grateful for your tenacity as champions for your people and for your passion for highlighting an issue which is so dear to all of your hearts and should be more widely known by Australians. Just finally, I'd like to give you a quote. This was actually provided to me specifically for this speech by a good friend of mine from Greek Heritage. And I'd like to just pause for a moment to recognise the close relationship between the Greek and Armenian communities. There are very, very many people in South Australia in my, and in my own electorate of Badco of Greek descent. And I know from speaking with them that there is an enduring friendship between the people of these two nations. The quote is from the often quoted but always inspiring Nelson Mandela, and he said, No one is born hating another person because of the colour of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. I commend this motion to the House and I commend the Honourable Leader of Opposition Business for moving this motion. I hope it will receive the support of everyone in this House and in the other place. And I wish the Armenian community in their, uh, all the best in their ongoing fight for self-determination. The Deputy Premier. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I wish to uh, speak briefly in relation to this motion and uh, note that the member for West Torrens has presented this matter, as indeed uh, this parliament has received uh, similar uh, motions, uh, certainly in the time I've been here, where there's a call on some uh, aspect of condemnation to protect a minority group, in this case uh, an ethnic minority group. And uh, I note that uh, attention is being drawn to the House of the member for, uh, former member for Croydon, uh, who's also present. It's not often that we agreed uh, on a lot of things in the parliament, but one I can recall when debates had been presented uh, in the uh, atrocities that have occurred in Afghanistan, uh, certainly areas that we've, he spoke passionately on, I've spoken on in relation to the disputes in that regard. Uh, and in the time that I've been here, uh, the, um, what has been described as really the invasion of Cyprus uh, in the 1970s, and those issues have been uh, outlined in uh, this parliament and various uh, motions presented to um, express our distress uh, and or condemnation uh, of conduct. And when it comes to the um, a, a pro when it comes to action against and attempts to eradicate, uh, to uh, have a holocaust against those who are in a minority group, it's even more offensive and it's even more distressing. So I note that the Armenian Cultural Association have brought this uh, request through to the um, uh, Minister for West Torrens for us to uh, join with that. It adds a number of other aspects, including uh, what we might ask federal governments to do. It doesn't mention the federal parliament, but federal governments. It doesn't ask anything about federal oppositions and the like, but nevertheless, there's three things that we do when we receive these motions, as sympathetic as they may, of course, present uh, on the face of it. One is to consult with the community who've asked for it. Uh, second is to uh, deal with any other uh, parties that may have an interest in this matter. In this case, uh, where there's a request to deal with uh, federal policy makers at the government level, of course, to deal with them. And it is important that we do that. I just wish to place on the record in this important issue, uh, a request has come to me in the last 24 hours to meet with uh, members of the senior members of the Armenian community to be able to uh, identify a position for the uh, government and or any other government members. I'm not sure whether that opportunity has been given to uh, crossbenchers, but it's come to me. Uh, I've responded to it and I've uh, arranged to meet with them early next week. So uh, it is concerning that uh, the process is one where we uh, are not given an opportunity to uh, be able to speak to the members of the community who want us to be alert to the issues uh, on this matter. They're very serious matters. They're extremely disturbing matters. Uh, and uh, I, I, on the face of the, of the submission uh, that's been presented in this motion, 
uh, one couldn't help but be very sympathetic to it. But uh, I indicate to the House uh, the move of the motion uh, seems, I think, against any usual precedent to uh, insist uh, that we vote on this matter today. I I'm not going to be opposing this. I don't think others would want to oppose the motion, but I just want to place on the record how disappointed I am that we haven't been given an opportunity to meet uh, with the community. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, meet with them next week anyway, uh, uh, the, uh, whatever the outcome of today, uh, but I just place on the record how disappointed I am that that uh, process hasn't been followed. When historically on these matters we have, uh, and we certainly worked from opposition, when we were in opposition, uh, to ensure that that was uh, afforded to uh, those uh, in the um, uh, when a submission such as this was presented through a motion such as this. So disappointed as I am, I just simply place that on the record uh, and look forward to meeting with the Armenian community next week. Member for Enfield. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I rise today to speak wholeheartedly in support of the member for West Torrens's motion. I thank him for raising these serious uh, abuses of human rights in this place. And I want to say how proud I am that the father of the house speaks so passionately about this issue in this place just before. Um, I was actually very privileged to have heard that speech, felt very privileged to have heard that speech. Um, the Turkish government's support of Azerbaijan's war against the Republic of Atak and the Republic of Armenia is, is unconscionable in every way. The actions of the Turkish government have had a profound effect on so many millions of people throughout history including the lives of my family and me. As you may be aware, Mr Speaker, I'm here as a direct result of Turkish aggression that resulted in the displacement of 150,000 Greek Cypriots, including my family. They faced, as uh, the member for West Torrens talked about, murder, rape, displacement, horrific aggression. Due to the Turkish invasion in Cyprus, I was born in London a few months after my family fled their beautiful village of Eftagomi. It's been nearly 50 years later and there's still 1,500 Greek Cypriots who are missing, uh, who were imprisoned by the Turkish government. My homeland still remains divided. In its occupation of Cyprus, the Turkish military sought to ethnically cleanse the occupied territory through vol the violent expulsion of Greek Cypriots from their homes and preventing their return. And they settled about 120,000 mainland Turkish people into the occupied territory. The Republic of Turkey has a long history of brutal ethnic cleansing against civilian populations. In 1915, the Turkish Ottoman Empire committed atrocities against the Greek Pontians, Armenians and Assyrians, killing more than 1.5 million people in a deliberate act of genocide. Today, the Turkish military clearly continues to target Armenians. With the support of Turkey, Azerbaijan has committed widespread atrocities against Armenians, targeting civilian areas through the use of weaponised drones and cluster munitions. The capital of Atsak has been destroyed, along with smaller towns and villages. Some of the oldest Christian monasteries and cathedrals of global cultural significance have been targeted, vandalised and, in some cases, destroyed. While a peace agreement was recently signed, global leaders need to take steps to protect against this sort of ethnic cleansing and to enable these refugees to quickly return to their homes. I join with the member of West Torrens in condemning the actions of Azerbaijan and the Republic of Turkey in their aggression towards the Republic of Armenia and the Republic of Atsakh. I call on the federal government to condemn these attacks and to advocate for the safety and security of the Armenians and uh, through the provision of the international support uh, to ensure stability in the region. As the member for West Oran said, enough is enough. And I wholeheartedly agree with that, and I condemn, commend this motion to the House. The member for West Torrance speaks. He closes debate. The member for West Torrance. Sir, so I think now it is appropriate to make some thanks. First of all, sir, my thanks to you. Um, and I do not wish to reflect on a vote of the House, but I wish to thank you, sir, for upholding the traditions of this Parliament. You have conducted yourself today uh, as a good and independent speaker, and you have put the institution first. And I, for that, I wish to thank you and point out that 
the speaker is a member of the Liberal Party, but has today exercised himself with great distinction and he is a credit to his party today. For that, I thank him. I thank the crossbench. Member for Flory, uh, the member for Davin, um, White, and the member for Mount Gambier, and the member for um, Frome, um, for their support uh, in uh, continuing this important debate. I also thank the members of the Labor Caucus for their support. I also want to thank the Armenian Cultural Association, especially Emil and Elena. Um, I only recently met Emil. I've known Elena for a while. Uh, these young people uh, will keep their culture and their heritage alive and their community should be very proud of them. And it is a credit to the community that they are raising young leaders like this to keep the flame burning. That we will always remember what has occurred in the past that doesn't occur again in the future and to teach our children to remind them, remind them every day of what has happened in the past. Because we cannot lose our language we cannot lose our history. We cannot lose our faith. We must keep uh, those, uh, those bedrocks uh, of who we are intact. Patrick Conlon, who used to be a member of parliament here, would often say to me, um, you can love your mother and your wife, which is an interesting concept for migrants. He loved Ireland, but he also loved Australia. I love my heritage, but I'm an Australian first. That doesn't mean that I forget my Hellenic culture and my Hellenic history and my faith. The same is to be said for Armenians. I thank uh, the government uh, for allowing the debate on this bill and for allowing its passage in silence. Uh, that does take leadership. So, uh, on behalf of the Parliamentary Labor Party, uh, on behalf of all of my colleagues, to the Armenian community of South Australia, we are standing with you. And now this parliament will speak and will speak in support of Armenia and Aztec for those who have lost their lives to ensure that it never occurs again. I commend this motion to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Is it seconded? Put it at once. Those opinions say aye. Aye. Against say no. It's carried. Clark. Private members' business.